Tom, I communicate through email to you. That was a close one. As occultist historians acknowledge, some of the players of the French Revolution, like Francois Noël Babouf, were of Illuminati origin. They were renowned for their uncompromising hostility towards religion. According to historian Michael Howard, Grand Master Weishaupt felt a pathological hatred against religion and that their planned revolution tried to realize it never happened, but their brothers in France successfully carried out theirs in the form of the French Revolution. You recall that in France, by a joint operation of the Catholic Church and the King, the Templars were arrested and their order liquidated. No doubt one of the surviving Templars turned to Mason's foremost ambition was to weaken, even destroy these two institutions. So it's very significant that the Masons play such a role in the birth of the French Revolution. Getting rid of the king, getting rid of the church at that point, and blood was cheap. Fear ran rampant in the streets. You never knew in the French Revolution who was to be guillotined next. In the occult conspiracy, English historian Michael Howard points out to the role played by the Masonic Lodges in the preparation of that revolution. Its grand master, Savalette de Lage, found one of these lodges, founded one of these lodges called Friends of Truth, whose political philosophy drew up the framework for the social reforms that brought about the revolution. Another important lodge connected with the Savalette of Delage was the Nusur, the Nine Sisters, which counted among its members names like Voltaire, the inventor, Benjamin Franklin, John Paul Jones, and was busy formulating alternative secular systems of education and developing completely secular theories of history, of literature, of chemistry, and of medicine in opposition to the churches. During the revolution, the College of Apollo, founded by the Lodge, of course, was renamed like a Republican. Voltaire, Franklin, and Jones were members of the Nine Sisters Masonic Lodge. Books written within the short period of the revolution testify to the important role Masonry played, according to a, a claim widely circulated. The uprising that ignited the revolution was planned at the great Masonic convention in Wilhelmsbad in 1782. One participant of this convention was Comte de Marabout, a leader of the revolutionaries. After returning to France, he immediately moved to implement in the lodges of France the decisions taken at the convention. Behind the scenes, Comte Cagliostro played a leading role in the revolution. He was born in Sicily, real name, Joseph Balassimo, a member of the Illuminati and the classic Masonic lodges in Germany. He was chosen to become one of the agents entrusted with the mission of disseminating radical and revolutionary ideas across Europe. So he was preparing the ground for the eventual French Revolution. At the end of his tour, he went to France and became a Jacobin. The Grand Masonic Congress of 1875, he got new orders for preparing for the Revolution. In that same year, Cagliostro was the focal point of the diamond necklace affair. After making the Queen of France the victim of a conspiracy devised to give the impression that she had a love affair with a cardinal. Among the people, this irreparably dented the reputations of both the church and the monarchy, which was the intent. French novelist Alexandre Dumas confirmed that this scandal was arranged by the Freemasons. Now, after knowing that about 
the past history of our Earth. I take you now to today in places like well, Egypt, Yemen, Libya, the so-called Arab unrest fomented once again nothing is new under the sun it's only history repeating itself what I've been telling you what's been happening in the past the same agent provocateurs are doing today stirring it up causing the chaos to create the change to a new world order. So in his capacity as largest agent provocateur, Cagliostro was at the center of many events leading up to the revolution. In a letter about the coming revolution, he wrote from London to a friend in Paris in 18, er, 1787. He spoke out about how the Bastille would be stormed. The church and the monarchy would be abolished and replaced by a new religion based on the principles of reason. Cagliostro was no fortune teller, so the information contained in his letter more likely came from his superiors in the lodge. As Michael Howard put it, from 1785 to 1789, several of the Masonic lodges in France were working full-time to undermine the monarchy and the established government. The French Revolution was the making of Freemasonry. The Masons saw the revolution as a major milestone on the way to their desired new social order, as well as an act of revenge for what the French monarchy had done to the Templars. When an agitated mob marched on the Bastille, Comte Mirabeau shouted, The idolatry of the monarchy has received a death blow from the sons and daughters of the orders of the Templar. The real aim of the storming of the Bastille wasn't to free a handful of prisoners from the strategically unimportant prison. It had made a symbol for the revolution for a different reason. This was where the Grand Master Jacques de Molay had been imprisoned for years before his execution in 1314. If one purpose of the revolution was to avenge de Molay, then the Bastille was a priority target. Yes, I tell you, the role played by the Masons or to be more precise, the Neo-Templars. In realizing their revolution was revealed in 1789, when the Inquisition arrested Cagliostro, he quickly confessed, spewed all he knew, hoping to save his life. One of the first things he told the Inquisition was that the Masons were planning revolutions right across Europe, intending to finish off what the Templars had begun namely to destroy the papacy and bring it under control. In the spring and summer of 1789, an artificial shortage of grain was created by the Illuminati manipulations of the grain market. This produced a famine so intense that it brought the nation to the edge of revolt. One of the leading figures in this scheme was the Duke Duarlan, the Grand Master of the Grand Orient Lodges. The Illuminati claimed that their revolution would be for the benefit of the bourgeoisie, with the people used as instruments. But in reality, the conspirators held up the food supplies and blocked all reforms in the National Assembly to exacerbate the situation, and the people starved. A panic was created simultaneously around the nation. Horsemen rode from town to town telling the citizens that brigands were approaching and that everyone should take up arms. 
citizens were instructed that the conspirators were being harbored in the larger estates, the chateau, and that by edict of the king all should be torched. The people, obedient to their monarch, complied. Soon the flames of destruction were burning out of control. Anarchy continued to grow as citizens began raiding and pillaging, and not just for food. Will that scenario also play out once again? History has a propensity to repeat itself with these men in control. With the beginning of the revolution, the Jacobins, most of whom were also Masons, began a campaign of terror. Ten thousand royalists and church members were sent to the guillotine, drowning France in a sea of blood. The details of this time of terror and the Masonic messages they contain gives food for thought. Depopulation actually continues today, you know. Not just through starvation, say, in Somalia, as is going on now, but today in the Western, technologically advanced system countries. Through abortion, depopulation continues today through abortion. Terror was rampant in the streets of Paris, not surprisingly. In November of 1793, a campaign against religion was inaugurated by a massacre of all the priests all over France. In the cemeteries, the cherished motto of the Illuminati, Death is an eternal sleep, was posted by order of the Illuminatus. In the churches of Paris, feasts of reason were celebrated where women of easy morals, shall we say, well, they were simple prostitutes. Anyway, they were enthroned as goddesses. They were also known as Eretherion, and were modeled on Weishaupt's plan to honor the god of love, Eros. Spaceman, back with more. It's talk radio, AM 640. It's a view from space. And that's all it is. This is Talk Radio, AM 640. Oakley in the morning, Bynan in the afternoon. A chorus entertainment company, CFMJ.